Hello everyone, my name is Robert Abbasi Stone and you're tuned in to another lecture from the hood. Today's topic is why you should never, ever allow a white person in, in your serious political and conscious meetings. Now, before you lose your mind, I'm going to break it down like this. Um, I'm going to give you three examples of why you shouldn't and then also give you examples of how people change in the presence of, of white people. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you some ideas now about how people change. Um, when a white person joins your meeting or, or attends your meeting, uh, people go out of their way to make sure that they're comfortable. People go out of their way to make sure that no one says anything to them that might make them upset. People want to make white people happy, black people. And the problem with this is, is that if you have an agenda to deal with concerning saving the community, that takes a back seat to how comfortable the white people in your meeting are. And that's a no-no. We, if we're talking about saving the children and talking about making white people comfortable when they come to our meetings, the average black person would want white people to be comfortable over saving our children. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous. I know that might sound crazy. But let me give you just a few examples. One meeting that I went to um, about 10 years ago, um, and these are just examples of other meetings that, I, that I've attended. So these aren't like uh, isolated incidents. One meeting I went to, the white woman um, was, was made a presentation. And the presentation was all about how they were sending black children to college on scholarships. And everyone talked about how wonderful a job she was doing. My question was, were the children graduating? And if they weren't graduating, are they, are they dealing with the issues that cause children or cause students to drop out? And one of the main reasons students drop out is because they're isolated on white campuses that really aren't sympathetic to African Americans achieving in college. If those issues aren't addressed, then the children can't graduate. I addressed this to, to the person speaking. Uh, she suggested that we meet again and talk more about the subject. She was open or seemed open to talking about it. And she also recognized it as a problem. Once the meeting was over, I had a principal. This was a principal. This was someone who was a principal of a school with black children in it. His question to me wasn't about children being prepared to deal with racism at colleges. His concern, his only concern, was that I talked to the white woman in a stern voice, and I might have scared the white woman. Now, what does that have to do with saving our children? When we're at these meetings, there's one thing to point out is that these white people never say anything about or they know that uh, controversy, people being unsatisfied, comes along with the job. But black people don't seem to think so. Meeting number two. This is the first time I've ever seen this happen. Um, I was at Temple University. I was president of the Black Student Union. Uh, we had invited some white students to come out who were also activists fighting for some of the similar things that we were fighting for on campus. The white students started to try to take over the meeting with issues that was contrary to the interests of black students on campus. Now, being that I had young black students there who didn't know the issues, all they saw was a black man arguing with white students. It took me a week to explain to the black uh, students, the young ones, why we had to have that debate in front of everyone. And why I was even um, in a position where I should have even been debating with anybody white. Because the bottom line, that was the issue. You know, so here we are, we're supposed to be discussing issues pertaining to black students on campus. But here again, we're caught up with how white students are treated, or how white people are treated at our meetings. The third uh, 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 example um, is uh, we had a, a community organization um, at our rec center, and it was responsible for uh, for um, 
for the treasury and for money that was coming in that that black people were putting into into the uh, into the uh, into the pot that was supposed to go back out into programs for black children. We had a white guy who worked at the place. He was stealing money. One white guy. The whole rec center was petrified. The whole community was petrified because it was a white guy. Whole black community. This white guy stole money, admitted that he was stealing money, and it was stealing money from black children. The only reason it wasn't addressed, or the issues wasn't addressed, was because he was white. The only reason he got away with it was because he was white. Um, and the point that I'm trying to make is, is that when they come into our organizations, even when they come with a good heart, we change. We change. We allow them to do anything they want to do. Um, we become uh, 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 so passive in terms of how we talk to them. Um, we want to watch everything we say around them. Um, some of us act like slaves around them. Some of us act like servants around them. Uh, and my last story, we had an uh, all-black male organization, and after the Million Man March, we had white organizations who wanted to help black organizations. They sent to us um, a white man, I call him Tom. Um, and Tom was so gung-ho about being part of the organization, he wanted to join. The members allowed him to join. I was the only one who was against it. Uh, so I used it to my advantage. Um, me and Tom worked together uh, behind scenes, and, and I had Tom present proposals that I couldn't get passed, and every proposal that he proposed passed. And I knew it would, because I knew he would word it in such a way that they would be, um, 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 and my, uh, um, they would be amazed by his language and, and how, how he presented uh, the information. I knew that um, they would want to impress him. Uh, I, I knew that they would not want to disappoint him. And so I got everything I wanted passed, you know. And once they found out what I was doing after after two years, they were very upset with me. But I had proved my point, you know, that that um, we do not act ourselves when white people are around. And so we have too many issues that have to, we have to deal with in our community. And one of them is that we cannot and should not um, be dealing with the issues of our immaturity our lack of um, confidence um, around white people. All those things come out, and you learn a lot about your brother when you have a white person in your meeting. And a lot of times it's not good. So we think having white people at your meetings, um, watch how people change in your meetings um, when there's a white person around. Um, and, and remember that the bottom line to our progress is, is raising our children, and fixing our communities and not serving and and uh and worrying about what white people think and feel. Peace.